Okay, let's get the party started. Dun, dun, dun. Let's see. Good morning. We'll wait a couple minutes for people to jump on and get their notifications. I'm trying to clean up my desk. It's a mess. I can't handle it when my desk is a mess. It freaks me out. Way too much. Way, way too much. So let's see. Oh, Rhoda, you're the first one here. Good morning. She says the sun has finally come out today in Tech Glen Rose, Texas. Hello. Good morning. Let's see if I can fix. There we go. That's better. Um, oh, gosh, I'm looking. There we go. I think that's a little better. So let's see. Bobby's here. Jane's here. Good morning. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Stephanie in Iowa. Hi, Don. Hi, M. Mays. Good morning. Uh, let's see. Hi, Ellen. Hi, Margaret. Hi, Shirley. Hi, Russ. Hello, hello. Hi, Brenda. Hi, Joe. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, Arla. Hi, Upstairs San Hobby Room Sandy in Ontario, Canada. Good morning. Hi, Gloria. Good morning. Hi, Teresa. Hi, Beth. Let's see. Oops. Hi, Ivy in Hawaii. I'm so jealous. Oh, uh, let's see. Hi, Bonnie Brown. Hi, Dina. Hi, Merlin in San Diego. Not too far away. Hi, Georgianne in Tennessee. Good morning. Hi, Marianne in Washington. Uh, let's see. Another Barbara. Good morning. Hi, Meg. Hi, Carlon. Back from vacation. Oh, she got to see Billy Joel. Oh, how fun. How fun. Hi, Shelby. Good morning. Hi, Tammy. Hi, Becky. Hi, Jennifer in Michigan. Good morning. Hi, Debbie in Wisconsin. Hi, Mary Lynn in Ohio. Bella says, happy Monday. Yes, happy Monday. Um, oh, Debbie just got her folded club. You're welcome for the freebie. Isn't it a good one, Debbie? I told you it was a really, really good one. Oops. I told you. I told you. Um, Ellen says they've been having some gnarly storms in uh, last night in East Texas. I heard there were like 78 tornadoes, too, like in the tornado area. I was like, that is insane. Hi, Deborah in Northern California on Facebook. Hi, Karen in sunny Arizona. Hi, Pharrell in New Mexico. You know what? It's actually um, sunny here today which is pretty exciting. The last couple of days, it's been hit or miss on sun. So I'm happy that it's sunny here today. Uh, Mary Lynn wants to know, how's Kirsten and the baby? She, they are all, they are all doing well. They're starting to get into a routine and figure out, you know, life as a party of five. Uh, it's funny. Katie mentioned the other day, she said, Kate, Kirsten's the first one, like in our direct family that's had more than two children. So it's kind of like, we're like all, whoa, this is like, Three, there's three. Um, I have not tried the Lucky Charms trick. Tammy, are you the one that sent it to me? So listen to this. Stephanie got her folded, yay. So hi, Nana, good morning. Um, so uh, Tammy sent me this cool thing on Facebook, uh, Instagram. Uh, and I, I did, I like, it went to a weird section on my messages. Hi, Jeffrey, good morning. But apparently if you take a bowl of Lucky Charms and put them in the microwave. And the guy said 18 seconds, no more than 18 seconds. He said 18 seconds is the right time. And you put it in there, the marshmallows will puff up and be like regular marshmallows. Cause right now they're like dehydrated. So they will literally pop, puff up to be regular marshmallows. So I haven't gotten to try it yet, but I'm excited about it. Elle says, so excited for your family. Thank you. Um, Tammy, thanks for thinking of me. First of all, that was awesome. Um, but thank you. Yes. Uh, we're excited too. We're, we're, um, I did tell Kirsten the other day though, this is something that I, it felt it was really on my heart to tell her, but when we, I feel like I'm echoing when we go over to see their family, um, you know, they don't live that far away. So we see them almost every other, about every other day, roughly four times a week. Usually we have to schedule, but, um, when we go over, we don't really make a big deal about the baby. We're just like all about the boys. Ah, come here. Uh, and it's not, and I explained to her, it's not that we're not excited about the baby. We love her. We're so freakishly excited. Right. And I love when I get to hold her. Kirsten's very, um, loves to let me hold her. So that's awesome. I just, the baby doesn't know that we're not, not excited to see her, right? We are very excited to see her, but we show more excitement to the boys so they don't get any jealousy or any issues like that. We don't want them to ever feel like they have to share us or anything. Um, now, eventually as baby sister grows up, it'll be different, 
But for right now, baby sister doesn't know that we're not ah, for her. Right. So we're just really making sure that we, um, um, uh, surely it was on her own. Um, we just, um, really wanted to make sure that she, um, uh, that, that the boys know Nana and Gaga are all about them. Right. And yeah, mom and dad are about the baby because they have to be, but Nana and Gaga are all about you, you know? So we just don't want them to be, you know, I don't know. We just want to make sure. Oh, Frank and Sharon are home and they get to play with their new cupcakes. Yay. So hi, Nancy. Good morning. Uh, Debbie just got her first kit. Yay. Yay, Debbie. Woohoo. Uh, so yeah, but, um, she's, she's doing well. She's gaining weight. She's the baby that is not Kirsten. Kirsten's losing weight. She's lost. I mean, she's lost so much already. I don't know how much they don't. I remember when I was pregnant, they literally weighed me every single time I went to the doctor. Kirsten, and I say like, how much did you gain? She goes, they didn't, they didn't weigh me. Like a lot of times they don't, it's not like a big deal nowadays, which I really appreciate because you know what? When a woman is pregnant, She's supposed to gain weight. Leave her alone. <laughs> I, I just remember my my doctor like saying, oh, well, if you're at go at this rate, you're going to be blah, blah, blah by the time the baby's born. And I just remember feeling so defeated. So I, I appreciate now that they don't put a focus on how much you've gained. I mean, you know, they do all the necessary tests. If you if I mean, I just appreciate that. I just like hi, glory in Wisconsin. I just I just feel like that's so much better. Um, they do things a lot differently now. But one thing I wanted to talk about um, yesterday. Oh, by the way, if you ever watch our um, um, ever watch uh, Bible uh, 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 church broadcasts, um, I would love for you to go watch the one from our church yesterday. It was about forgiveness. And it was a really it was Pastor Justin. Justin is like the young the. Um, he eventually he'll probably end up taking over, but he does like once or twice a month at our church. Um, pastor Dave's the main, main pastor, but it was a really good message on forgiveness and just, you know, letting it go. And, and you know what, just, just let it go. Right. I don't know why that popped into my head, but I want to tell you, cause it was a really, really good message. I was really, I was really happy. Then, oh, safe from the tornado in Texas. Oh my goodness. There's so many tornadoes. You guys know. T t tornadoes are the scariest thing in my life. Earthquakes, no problem. Hurricanes, no problem. Well, I don't, I've never been in a hurricane, but tornadoes are the one. Tornadoes are the one that, that is not the way I want to go see Jesus. <laughs> that is like, seriously, no, not good. Um, Jeannie says, now they check the baby size, but ultrasound, not the scale. Yes. And I appreciated that. Yeah. They were pretty close on her baby sister's, um, what is the name of my church? The name of my church is Calvary Chapel Pacific Hills. They are in Laguna Hills, California. And Kenny and I have been going there over 20 years. Um, pastor Dave Rolf is the uh, is a pastor. And he uh, studied. He was very close to Chuck Smith, the, the originator of the Calvary Chapel brand of churches. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, Calvary Chapel Pacific Hills. But yesterday the message was by Justin and it was just, it was, it was really, really good. And you know, we all might have someone to forgive. Oh, this is why I brought it up. Okay. We'll do this. We can do this. So Ken goes to church for two services. So I go to church for one service because he helps in the high school room. So he got there before me. We drive separately. I got there, I sit down and Ken shows me his phone. Um, and it is a listing, a real estate listing of our dream home. Our dream home is on the market. This is now, if, if you're new, this is the home that we needed to sell to, um, cause we had a lot of equity in it. Um, prices had gone up quite a bit and we had a lot of equity and it enabled us to pay off some of the attorney fees that we had. And, uh, so we, we were, um, we were kind of like forced to sell the house. Um, it's funny because if you talk to some people that seem to think they know my finances, which is hilarious to me, 
on the other side of the table, uh, they said, oh, you didn't need to sell that house. Well, attorney fees are expensive, <laughs> let me tell you. So we had to sell the house. It was my dream home at the time. Um, I have now discovered that God had other plans for my family. Um, it's all okay, right? So, but the dream home is on the market. And uh, let me just tell you, um, Pharrell says I loved Calvary Chapel in Albuquerque. Oh yeah, find another Calvary Chapel. Pharrell, I'm telling you, I love all Calvary Chapels. And, but, but Ken, right when I sat down, he showed me his phone and it was the list, it was our house. And whoa, <laughs> that was a doozy. I, I was really surprised he showed me before the service started um, because he knew I'd be thinking about it a little bit. And I'm not gonna cry, I'm not gonna cry. It was, it was really good to have a message on forgiveness because going back to that time in our lives, um, someone that we were very close to, someone that was a family friend. He knew my entire family. He, um, his daughter's uh, bridal shower was held in my home. I hosted her bridal shower. Um, just, just was a very close family member, friend. And he also worked at the other company and he, whatever. But having the message about forgiveness was so appropriate for me. You know, God speaks to you in different ways. It was so appropriate to me. I have forgiven him. I never want to see him again. Doesn't mean I have to talk to him ever again. Doesn't mean I ever want to see him again. See, I don't want to see anyone in his family. I wish them the best. I, I, I have prayed for him. I pray that he, he finds his way with Jesus once again, because he did always say he was a believer. Um, things that were, um, whatever, but, um, it's not my place to question where he is with God. However, I have forgiven him. And that message was the perfect time for me to hear it, to remind me about forgiveness because, it only hurts the person that's not forgiving, right? It doesn't hurt. It doesn't affect the other person at all. If someone doesn't, if someone doesn't forgive you that you did something, it's like, it's whatever for you. Right. But for them, the person that's not forgiving, they're the one that is, is, has the hatred and the poison in them. Right. So it was just a good reminder for the forgiveness I did. I do have um, I do a hundred percent forgive him. Um, God has other, other plans for our family. Um, we all live very much closer to each other now, which helps a lot with the boys. So Debbie says, it's okay to cry. You're being honest with your feelings. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and God's timing is everything. Yeah. It was the perfect message for me. Um, uh, uh, Erica, that's beautiful. She, Erica said, I always say that tears are an outward sign of God working in us. That is true. That is true. Elizabeth says you can forgive, but don't forget. Exactly. Exactly. And that's the truth. That's the truth. I mean, it, you know, um, in fact, well, whatever. Okay. So, uh, the house, they, um, so we got to see the pictures cause they're all online and, um, they changed a lot. They, um, uh, they kept my two beautiful chandeliers, both of them, that person that I'm talking about installed for us in that's random. Huh, that shows you. But uh, in fact, he met my future son-in-law before I did. There's like so many, you guys, <gasps> the stories I could tell. Anyway, um, they changed a lot about the house. They changed all the paint color. They they took out all the flooring we had put in. Um, it's be It looks beautiful. Uh, not my style now, but it looks beautiful. Unfortunately, and I would never even consider buying buying it. Um, I know a lot of people said, "Oh, someday you'll buy it back." No, no, no. Um, it's it's no longer in the, God's plan for us. It really, really, hundred thousand percent. I can say that. Never. I would never live in that part of town. I mean, town part of Southern Orange County again. Um, where we live now is where we should be, and so hundred percent. 
But the kicker is, so this was five years ago that we sold it almost like exactly to the month, five years ago to the month. Um, it's listed on the market for almost double what they bought it for from us. Almost double. Now, that is going to give you an idea about Southern California prices. To think that future generations are going to be able to buy homes, I don't, that just like blows my mind because literally almost double what they paid for it five years ago. So, uh, yeah, it was pretty crazy. Sherry says the Lord knows exactly what and when we need to hear that means the most. Yes. Yeah. It was, it was a really good message. It was, I, I just, I was, yeah, it was awesome. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it was, it was just, I think it was just a huge surprise and I was just really surprised to see it. Um, but at the same time, I'm happy for the family that bought it. Um, I'm excited that they're going to make that much money, money off of it. Um, that's great. I mean, I, I mean, it, it's a beautiful, beautiful home. It is not for me anymore. Um, I, I mean, I think I've talked about like, it was, it was, it was amazing. I remember when we bought it, Ken and I prayed a lot because it was, it was a lot for us and we bought it like on a huge downturn. So it was way less. I mean, they had lowered the price a lot. I mean, it was like this really cool situation that we were able to get it, but, um, uh, it's definitely nothing I would ever consider getting now. So, I mean, it's all, it's all good. I don't want you guys to think I'm like upset or anything. Um, but it was just a good reminder. Cause like literally it was so weird. Ken showed me that we sat down and did a ser sermon on forgiveness. So it was perfect time. God's timing, of course. Right. Uh, Becky says home is where the heart is. And isn't that the truth? Isn't that the truth? Um, Ellen says, ironic that he installed lighting and God shined that light on his effect on your life. Oh, isn't that sweet? Isn't that sweet? Yeah. Yeah. So don't think that, yeah, I mean, this is, the, I'm, I'm not sad. I, I'm not. I'm not. It's just, when you know, sometimes when you look back on your life and you just go, whoa, that's insane. Um, but at the same time, the entire time, God had us in his hands the entire time. Uh, I mean, just with the baby, the boys at the time, you know, just everything. God really had his hand on everything. Um, uh, Don says, when my mom passed, we got her house, keeping it so the kids have a place to live. Rent and home values are way, are way out there and not affordable for young people. That is so true. That is so true. Uh, Betty says, I found that God always makes the money available when we need it. Isn't that the truth? Isn't that the truth? Uh, Elizabeth says, God is great. He's better than chocolate cake. That is true. That is true. Uh, Schooly, Schooly says, Washington housing prices are a lot. I think the whole West Coast. Yeah, I think so. I think so. So, yeah, no, it's all good. I don't want you to think anything else. But it was just a real big surprise to see that. Um, yeah, really big surprise. But another thing, and and. I'm not, I won't be talking about like Kirsten and the baby very much, but um, Sharon says it's worth double because Stephanie Bernard lived there. <laughs> no, it's not. That's funny though. Thanks for the laugh. <laughs> but um, so Kirsten, I, I'll, speaking of God, so um, I, and I, I, this is not my story to tell. I, I know I shared a lot about when the boys were born, but um, uh one thing I did mention, I think already, but when Kirsten had our baby sister, um, she was in the hospital nine days, Kirsten was. Um, and uh, I'm not gonna talk about why or anything, but I wish I could share with you, and it's not my story, so I can't, but I wish I could share with you the times in those nine days, we literally saw God working. Literally, I feel like, I could, I, I, I just, I wish I could explain it. It was one of those things. So do you ever, here's this part I can tell you. Do, do you ever have things like all of a sudden something's on your heart, like a certain person's on your heart and you're like, oh, whoa, I haven't thought of them in 10 years or, oh, wow. And and so I, whenever that happens to me, I just try to pray for that person um, just in case for some reason, I don't know. And something happened during those nine days and God put it on my heart to talk to this certain individual 
And I didn't know this certain individual very well. Um, I, I was like, oh, that's kind of weird for me to go up to her and just talk to her, right? Like, and, and to ask her for help. And I'm like, you know, you know, I'm not a person that goes up to people and asks for help, especially people I barely know, right? I don't like to ask for help anyway, in general. And so he kept putting it on my heart, talk to her, talk to her, talk to her. And I'm like, okay, fine, fine, I'll do it. So totally random. This is a person like I've talked to maybe three times in my life kind of thing, right? So I went up to this person that I saw her and I went up to her and I asked her, it, I asked her something and she had the answer. Um, I'm trying to think of how much I could say. I, I asked her if she, oh, okay. I asked her if she knew someone that could help us. And not only did she know someone that could help us, she turned around and said, that's her. So I went up to that person and I, tears streaming down my face, asked her, and she literally, this woman I've never, never met before, jumped into action, took control of a certain situation, and gave our entire family, including Kirsten and Colin, complete peace. And Keep in mind, this is someone I've only talked to maybe three times in my life. It was very awkward for me to go up to her and talk to her. Tears streaming down my face. The person she literally pointed to was the only other person in our general area. And this person had the answer to fix, not 100% fix everything, but give all of us 100% peace in the situation. And she literally jumped into action. She didn't just say something or talk on the phone. She literally went home, changed her clothes and fixed the situation or, or fixed our, our situation, not fixed it, but took care of it, took control of it. And it was one of those things that like, if I told you the whole story, you would not believe me. You would not believe me. You'd say, are you freaking kidding? That's not, that's not possible. If you were not a believer, if you were a believer, you would totally look at me and say, God, because there is no other possibility that this could have happened. This you cannot call this coincidence. You cannot. I mean, it was just it was just one of those things where you're like, thank you, Jesus. Like it, it, it's literally. It, 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 and then I I remember hugging this person that I'd never met before, hugging her and saying thank you, thank you, thank you. And she looked at me. And she said, "We're family. We're family. We're family. And we're Jesus's family." And she took care of the situation. You guys, it was unbelievable, unbelievable. And um, it's a story that I hope maybe Kirsten someday will let me share the entire thing. But let me just tell you, flabbergasting, flabbergasting. It's one of those things where you literally just say, Thank you. <laughs> so that was, um, so always listen to those little weird voices. <laughs> um, he said, talk to this person, ask her, talk to her, talk to her, talk to her. And I was like, that is so weird. That's awkward. You know, um, I, and I tried it. Ken, Ken says I'm much better at listening to that feeling or, or that my heart when I feel like God just put something on my heart or the Holy Spirit's talking to me. Um, um, it's, God is good, Allie. Yeah. I mean, it's just <clears throat> one other time. Um, I, I mean, I, I can think of a lot of it and I need to start writing these all down in my prayer journal just because it's really important. But one time I was literally, this is, you guys, this is the truth. I, not that I don't like telling you the truth, but I was literally driving. I don't know why I was driving to San Diego. Don't remember why this was years ago. And, uh, God put somebody on my heart. And like severely, like boom, right in my, like boom. And I, I was like, whoa, okay. And so I, I just felt like I had to call this person. So I didn't have her phone number in my phone. I literally had to contact Faileen, tell her to text me the phone number. I'm driving on the freeway, looking at the ocean on the side, right? I'm driving down the freeway, looking at the ocean. 
I literally, I'm by myself. I literally am able to press her phone number into my phone, talk on my speaker in my car. And I said, Hey, so-and-so God just put me on your heart. And I just want you to know, before I called you, I prayed for you and I'm going to continue to pray for you. And there you go. And she's like, Stephanie, this is the weirdest thing in the world because I just found out and she just told me this whole long thing. And she's like, I am so thankful you called me. It means the world to me that you called me. It helps me to know that God's listening to me. It was just like one of those things again, where I'm just like, okay, you just got to listen to that little weird. And I don't know. I, I mean, do I really think God doesn't, isn't whispering in my ear. He puts it on my heart or the Holy Spirit's talking to me and putting it on my heart and like almost nagging me because sometimes I try not to listen. <laughs> so I really, really do try to listen. Um, and, and sometimes it puts me in weird situations where, um, you know, I, I do. And Ken's like, whoa. And I'm like, no, it was on my heart. I had to do it. And so, um, just try to always listen to that. Okay. Um, tr just try to listen to that feeling because, or that, that on your heart or, if, or if somebody, if God puts somebody on your heart, all of a sudden just pray for them. And, um, Tammy says, I'm always amazed how he shows us when we listen and follow his lead. You know what? That's true. That's true. And, and it kind of blew me away when she told me everything that what had been happening that had just happened. And I was like, that's why I was supposed to call you just to tell you, just to tell you. So, um, Pharrell says, uh, prayer request. My husband has been diagnosed with ALS and we are struggling with the incredible shock. Yes, Pharrell. We are, hang on, let me write this down. Pharrell, we are going to be praying for you. That is not something to be messed around with, is it? Hang on. Um, yes. I'm writing it down right now, my love. Yes. Um, Ivy says, always listen to that still small part, small voice of God. Yes, that is true. Um, yeah, it's just, it's, um, Jeannie says, sometimes our egos interfere with the message. That is true. And so, yes, absolutely. That, that's why I'm just like, this is awkward to go talk to this person. Um, Gina says, my husband's always says, whoops, I didn't get to see that part. Hang on, hang on. I gotta find it. Uh, she said, uh, Oh, hang on. I lost it. My husband always says to look for miracles because God is giving them to us all the time. Gina, that's the total truth. That is a total truth. And, and I mean, I realize it's not Jesus turning the wine, the, the, um, the, the water into wine. You know, I realize that I realize that, but what it is, is it's everyday miracles that we don't acknowledge. That was a miracle, right? That was a miracle. That was a miracle. Um, oh, Rachel says, I know what you're saying. God was there for me when I lost my husband, big hugs to you, my love. Um, so yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty amazing. Uh, the whole situation with that. And, uh, by the way, Kirsten, baby, you're totally hundred percent fine. Everything's good. No, no, anything leftovers, all perfectly healthy. Uh, and, and now we have this little big baby girl. Yeah. She's awesome. She's, she's definitely awesome. And she has lots of hair so far. She still has brown hair, blue eyes. I, I think somebody told me um, at the six month mark, we'll know for sure what color her eyes are. Miller did request brown hair, blue eyes. I will be honest. So, you know, out of the mouth of babes, you know, little kids have that connection with God that, you know, that, that you know, you just, it's the truth. It's the truth. So blah, 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 blah. Um, Kirsten is home now, Sharon. Thank you. Yes. She's been home a good week or so, week and a half now. I'm um, home. Baby's doing really well. She gets up in the middle of the night um, twice to eat, but goes right back to sleep, which is awesome. Uh, she's a very good sleeper. Uh, yeah, I almost got a cute picture of her and Ken, but uh, as soon as, as soon as I had that, this is so funny. Ken was holding her and she's, she just looked, looking around. And then I said, oh, let me take a picture. As soon as I said that, she started crying. Literally. And I said, oh, she's just like the boy. She doesn't like photos. It was so funny. Uh, so I didn't get a picture. Uh, but Friday, we went to, we took the boys to Knott's Berry Farm. What time is it? Oh, gosh. Uh, Friday, we took the boys to Knott's Berry Farm. We had a lovely, lovely time. Uh, I did cry. Oh, my gosh, you guys. I keep crying. What I, Does this happen when you just start to get older and older? You cry more. The other day, I was laying in bed, and I realized. Um, so when we walk them home, we're able to walk them home in the stro double stroller. 
And one of the things the boys always do, and they know to ask very politely, they'll say, crazy driver, please. And what does that mean? That means Gaga, Grandpa Ken, drives the stroller crazy. He pretends he's going to run into that car. Then he turns really fast. And then he pretends he, and then he spins them around. And he does like all these funny things. And it's like almost like a roller coaster for them, right? And they just giggle and they just laugh and they have so much fun. Well, we took them home. We got home. I was exhausted by the end of the day. I'm laying in bed and I started to cry to think someday they won't ask for crazy driver. So we just have to appreciate every moment. <laughs> but um, are the boys adjusting to having a little sister? They are. They really are adjusting. Um, they like to look at her. They like to touch her little fingers. Um, Miller always goes up to her and touches her nose. But they are. They're doing really well. Kirsten is doing amazing, though. Kirsten, like the other day, I went over to their house um, to pick up the boys. And it was just Kirsten... Liam and Miller. And the three of them were in the front room. They were just laying on each other. They were playing. They were just doing whatever. And so I'm there for a couple minutes. And so I'm looking around. And I go, okay, don't forget you have three. There's one missing. <laughs> I'm a dork. And she goes, yeah, she's asleep in her room. She said, I just wanted to spend time with the boys. She is an amazing mother. She is an amazing, she is a thousand times better of a mother than I was. I just, I loved that, that she put the baby down in her room. So she, and of course she has a monitor. It's not scary or anything. So she could spend quality time with the boys. And I just loved that. I love, love, love that. Um, I just thought it was absolutely amazing. Uh, somebody asked about a, 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 a tonight's release. Is it tonight's release? Hang on. What's, no, it's not tonight. Tomorrow night. Tomorrow night's the big release with our new bundle uh excited about that one uh so yes tomorrow night will be the release lots of fun things coming up in may we are gonna do the live release the special live release on mother's day appropriate for those of you that might not get a present for mother's day i ask my kids not to buy me presents um I, you know i just want them to love me and spend time with me <laughs> but if you if you were expecting present didn't get one or if you want to just give yourself one this is going to be the perfect item so, um, uh, oh, the crazy, yeah, Jane says she, that's a guy thing. Yeah, it really is. Crazy driver is a, is a guy thing. Um, Sharon says she saw a sneak peek of the May card kit. It looks amazing. Oh, it is the May card kit, you guys. I know. So, so far, we have full intention of all of our card kits having A1 card dies in them. I know I said for the rest of the year that we would, but so far, even next year is A1, A1, A1. So I'm excited about that just because it, it gives you a bigger value. Cost me a little bit more, but you know how I feel about that, whatever, right? It gives you a bigger value for those card kits and they have been selling out, which is really exciting. Um, Ken always makes a, a few extra uh, more than a few, but that club has been growing again and um, he has been running out, which, you know, it's, it, it, to be honest, it's nice to sell out. So um, Sharon says it makes it a true card kit. Isn't that the truth? You're right. You're right, Sharon. It totally does. It totally does. And it's fun to have a different card base size, right? Because, you know, usually, and in my brain, I think a two, a two, four and a quarter, five and a half, four and a quarter, five and a half. But, um, Actually, I'm working on some more five by seven card fronts and I'm really excited about those because even if you don't have a bigger machine with our five by seven dies, the nesting dies, you can make a five by seven card. And I love five by seven cards because there's more real estate on them. When you give that card, whoa, it's like even bigger of a deal because it's a lot larger. So, um, uh, Oh, Allie Cat says she does crazy cart with the chopping cart. That's awesome. Is there an A1 envelope die? Yes, there is, Fro. Yes, there is. Elizabeth says stamps would be nice added sometimes. Elizabeth, I agree. We used to do stamps in every kit, but uh, it's either we can do stamps or we can do the A1 card base. And we've done a lot of, you know, research on comments that we've been getting back. And most people would rather have the card base than the stamps. 
So um, I always try to make sure I add extra phrases on our um, bundle sets or on the ones that we release on the first of the month because the stamps that are released on the first of the month will coordinate, will go with the card kit theme, right? So when you know the theme on the first for our Stamp and Die Hard Club, that's going to be the theme for the card kit. All different, but it's the same theme, if that makes sense. So um, some five by seven inserts would be nice. What do you mean by inserts, my love? Help me, help me understand. Because I'm thinking card fronts, but help me understand um, what you mean by inserts. Uh, love putting the A2 on five by sevens. Yes, that's fun too. Hi, Catherine. Catherine says the card kit is so fun. Um, okay, so Sharon, help me understand the, the five by seven inserts part. Uh, okay, so I need to head out. Uh, why do I look so short all of a sudden? I, I think I go like this a lot. And so on Facebook, I got like really short all of a sudden. <laughs> I'm such a dork. Uh, so tomorrow night, bundle, club bundle. Uh, it's where we put all of the brand new items, not the club items, but all the brand new items in a bundle and you save an extra 5%. So it's not the low price. It's not the flash sale price. It's club price, but an extra 5% off that. So it's like three different discounts. So pretty awesome. You are, uh, uh, okay. Love stitch dot rectangles now need bundle, um, circle oval square of the, um, dot stitch. Yes, Jeannie, we have more coming. We have more coming. Um, let's see. Uh, sneak peek or hint. Debbie on Thursday, I said, think vacation kind of maybe a little bit. I don't know. Okay. I, oh, 3D pop out, insert in rectangle pop out. Okay. I get it. Thanks, love. Thanks. 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 Okay. My friends, I got to get out of here. Uh, but Teresa says, kiss and enjoy those babies for us and mama. Thank you. I will. Oh, oh, I'm speaking up. I got a card. I got a card the other day. Um, this is from Jill Kennedy. I don't know if Jill's still here. Sorry, Jill. I hope somebody can you tell her that I showed this if she's not here. Um, she made this card for us for our baby girl and it says, um, Stephanie and Ken and all the family, congratulations. God bless your new baby girl. What a fabulous surprise. Best of luck always, Jill Kennedy. And she has her personalized stamp on the back. So my, thank you, Jill. I love it. I love it. It's on my desk and she used all felt for the bear, which you know, I love. Okay. My friends, I love you. Have a great day. Pharrell, I got you on my list, my love. Um, you and your hubby. Thank you so much. Have a great day. Stay, stay safe, stay happy, stay healthy. And uh, I will see you again. Kate, she asked, she's asking when the card kit started. I have no idea. Boom. Um, it was after the Stamp and Die Hard Club. <laughs> That's all I know. But my friends, thank you so much. Have a great day. And I will see you hopefully tomorrow night on the website for our, but our new release, but also Thursday night for another Crafting Corner where we get together live, 5 o'clock Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern, and we make something. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for being here, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's always a fun day.